right. Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for coming to the talk today. Very happy to see so many people here, even though I do not have AI in the title of my presentation. Nevertheless, the topic of the talk today is mobility as a service, a solution seeking a problem, unpacking the complexities of mobility integration in Germany. My name is Peter. I'm product lead at Mobimeo since 2019. I'm responsible for the search and route department and its product development. Our company was founded in 2018. We have around 170 colleagues in Berlin and Hamburg, 44 nationalities and one goal, changing the way how cities move. In the following 15 minutes, I would like to take you on a journey from giving you a short overview on mass platform, platforms, its promises, then confronting you with the reality of implementing such a platform in Germany and showing you a way ahead of how we still can make it a success. Before then, we should have time for some questions. What should a mass platform be anyway? So first and foremost, it's a one-stop shop for mobility needs. It integrates, integrates planning, booking, purchasing capabilities, all across different modalities in the private and public. The goal of the mass platform is to create a relevant alternative for the use of your private car. To do so, it integrates with all kinds of modality. Public transport as the backbone of the mobility system with all its buses, trams, and trains, but also car services like car sharing, ride hailing, taxi services, ride pooling, and so on. Then obviously, bike sharing, e-scooter sharing, moped sharing, but not only sharing vehicles, but also your private vehicles can be integrated. That can be your private car, your private bike, and obviously walking. But the main benefit doesn't lay in this integration of all these different modalities. It lays in the combination, and especially not only in the combination, but in the enrichment with outside data. So for my area, the routing area, for example, you could combine multi or intermodal routes, combining different mod modalities to go from A to B, solving a lot of challenges we currently have in the public transport sector on the first and last mile. If you then enrich these data with external data, such as weather data, occupancy data, or even personal mobility needs, you cater for every individual situation and context the perfect route and mobility option. Now, besides this rather B2C-focused area, such an aggregated platform does have a lot of benefit to every professional consumer because it aggregates a lot of data around mobility and how people travel from A to B. It is a vast resource for every city planner, uh, mobility provider, or policymaker. With all these capabilities, the promises are huge. First of all, accessibility. So as I mentioned, the users of a mass platform do have access to a vast range of mobility, not only in the number of modalities, but also in the number of vehicles around. This is especially important in the rural areas where you do not have that level of public transport as you would have in an urban area like Berlin. So you would have access to new modes of mobility such as ride hailing or ride pooling. Second, convenience. There's only one sign-up process for your account, one sign-up process for your payment method, and you have all the different modalities at your fingertip. You do not even have to switch context and use different kind of apps. Everything happens in the same application and UI. With a widely used mobility as a, plat mobility as a service platform, there's a lot of economic impact. For the providers, it, use it functions as a kind of catalyst, bringing easy access to a large number of users with only registering at one platform. 
for the users, it eases their use of mobility and hence increasing benefit for them as well. And last but not least, and maybe the most important promise of mobility as a service, with providing a valid alternative to your private vehicle, it can reduce congestion in the cities and hence make mobility as a total more sustainable. Now with these huge promises, as you know, reality hits hard and there is a couple of challenges on the way. And four of them I would like to highlight today. First of all, as the backbone of mobility is public transport, there's not yet enough data available in the public transport sector, especially because Germany is such a fragmented market. And when it comes to real-time information or the value-adding information I mentioned earlier, such as occupancy data, we are not there yet to provide a um, good basis for all kinds of services, such as routing. Uh, in my area. For the sharing providers, many sharing providers do have proprietary interfaces, making the implementation and the maintenance rather cumbersome. But it's not only the technical implementation, it's also the contractual setup, which needs high effort, it takes time, and is quite a big hurdle in the implementation of different sharing providers. As a third challenge, there are specific requirements for each and every city, region, and with these requirements, there are a lot of tender processes. And these tender processes define a specific set of functionalities and requirements to a certain point of time, and hence inhibits the development along the time um, in which the tender runs. And as the fourth and a very difficult uh, challenge we are facing, the business, model, business models have been proven as rather difficult. You might have heard that the different modality providers in the e-scooters, bike sharing, they sometimes struggle. They have sometimes the challenge to become profitable. And also for the mass platforms, the effort is high, the margins are low, and hence the difficult, the product, the business models prove to be difficult. So how do we go ahead? And obviously always looking into the future, there are several paths we can take. So I would like to highlight one possible scenario for each of the challenges. First of all, for data, in the public transport sector as a backbone of mobility. Besides standardizing data formats and establishing data sharing agreements, and we've seen, for example, the data sharing platform earlier today, we need to work towards open public data um, even further. We are on a good path, but we need to have more data um, available for all kinds of players in the market. Second, for the proprietary interfaces of sharing providers, we need to think of standardization. And even though every player, and especially the big ones, have their special requirements, for regional and smaller ones, um, it might make sense to think about standardizing their interfaces and hence becoming easier access to mobility as a service platforms. And as we have seen yesterday and also today in the talks about AI, technology is advancing rapidly and it will increase the speed even more. To be able to keep up with the speed and not lose the time at tender runs, we should switch the tender mod models from a defined set of features towards a software as a service approach so everybody can benefit from the technology development during that time. As a fourth point, I would like to emphasize that collaboration is key. Change is only possible if municipalities, public transport companies, 
public transport associations join forces instead of purchasing and pursuing their own solution on themselves. Besides these rather technical aspects, I would like to highlight two more. While there's a lot of passion in developing each individual contribution for a mass platform, such as e-scooters and bikes, and even fancy flying taxis, the buzz around mobility as a service has decreased quite significantly over the last year. But it shouldn't. A mass platform is key for sustainable mobility. And sustainable mobility is what we need at the moment. And that is maybe the second part. Time is running out. And we need to be successful to have an impact on the global climate change. And hence, swift and sustain substantial action is indispensable. Now, if people ask you, what did you take away from that talk? I wish you remembered six different topics. First of all, data democratization. The ownership of data in public transport sector must be decluttered and standardized. We need to work together to achieve a successful mobility as a service platform. We need to redefine procurement strategy to profit on the technology advancement. And we need to see regulation as an ally to achieve and maybe get out of the prisoner's dilemma we are in at the moment. And the last two points, ignite the passion, be curious about mobility as a service, and we have to do that all now. The time is now, time is running out. Thank you very much. Any questions, I think? Um, hi. hi. Thanks for the talk. Um, I immediately had to think of uh, Yelby, which does that on, on a Berlin scale, I suppose. And what I would be interested in, your company, will it, uh, does it plan to, um, to provide further capabilities? And then what is the difference? Do you want to do that on a large scale, like uh, Germany-wide, uh, Europe-wide? Uh, what, is, what is the aim? Yes. Um, so the focus is in Germany, and it's especially um, the difference, especially if you travel along the different regions. And I've, I think we have seen that with the 9-euro ticket and now the 49-euro ticket. Um, maybe the focus on the different region is not what we need at the moment, but rather on a nationwide approach. And having that combined, for example, with a mobility budget to be able to use your uh, budget on different regions throughout Germany. Okay, if you have no further questions, um, I mean, you have Peter's contact. You can see, I'm sure you can also find him on the Hub app, and uh, you stick around for the day. Yes, Maybe people okay. can find you around. Thank you very much. We'll have a short break, and we will be back for the next talk in about five minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you.